this week, let me remind you, I am not a pastor. I honor pastors for their patience, their care, their diligence, but I am not one. And that's good. You need to know what you're called to and what you're not. Now, in a sense, I'm in a pastoral role. You could say people are like, you're pastoring a movement. Not that I'm the only one, nor did I invent it. I like to call the movement the gospel. It's been here for a while. We've been asking God to do a new thing, and he's been trying to tell us the new thing has been here for 2,000 years from the foundation of the world, if you really had eyes to see it. So, yes, I somewhat pastor pastors. There is some truth to that. There are probably more leaders who actually watch these things and get sermon material on Saturday night. I'm sure only the brave ones actually quote me on Sunday mornings. But look, that's the thing. A pastor has this unenviable job of coming up with stuff to talk about every week. And no wonder they're bored for the most part. Or I shouldn't say bored. A lot of them are bored. A lot of them are definitely boring. I mean, think of the pressure. Most of you prefer to text your friends because you don't even want to talk on the phone with real people. But your pastor has to stand in front of a whole congregation every week, come up with fresh material, and get slated and criticized for it half the time. I mean, most good Good comics are lucky if they get an hour's worth of solid material out of the year of traveling on a road. I mean, they get to feel what works, what jokes don't, and slowly they add in stuff until they've worked a masterpiece. But your poor pastor, he's got to keep inventing stuff all the time to keep you happy. Well, look, that's the thing, okay? I'm not one of them. But somehow I found myself in this position I've sort of been roped into with these weekly videos where I'm always generating new sound bites for you every week. And none of you send me a tithe and most of you don't chip in at all. Now look, I enjoy it, don't get me wrong, otherwise I wouldn't do it. And usually I actually have more material than time allows, so that's not a problem. After all, I'm a preacher. But occasionally I have moments like tonight where I have an hour before I've got to kick your weekly Jesus trip out the door, and I'm thinking, what should I talk about? What do people need to hear? I mean, I'm not the guy who just wants to fill space, but there is an aspect of hearing from Holy Spirit. So I'm like, Holy Spirit, what do you want to talk about? And so then I just start looking around my house. Uh, we could talk about my dog who likes to eat bubbles. You like, it's not like a consistent rate for the day. I'm like, oh yeah, my story, you'll go off and it'll be like five within like ten minutes. We could talk about my son who likes to play guitar. who likes the occasional glass of red wine. We could talk about my other son, who mostly likes to sit around and play video games. And then I just figure, well, I'll text my friend Chad. He's awfully bored with me by now. If he can think of a topic that he would actually like to hear me talk about, then so would everyone else. So I go, Chad, I procrastinated, and now I need to do a last-minute Jesus trip. Any ideas? And he goes, science and faith, LOL. Well, I'm not LOLing because that sounds stupid. So I go, come on, something I can throw together fast. 
I mean, I just told him this is a procrastination job. I wasn't studying for you guys all week. I was filling out 990 forms for the IRS. Anyways, there were a few other texts between me and Chad that just aren't appropriate for this forum. And so then Chad goes, you could teach on healing. Then for fun, reach your hands out toward the camera and ask people to put their hands on the screens if they need healing. Then somehow that short clip or screenshot will get shared and we will be sure that this guy whose name we've blurred out sees it. He will go ape. S star 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 over stuff like that, whatever S star 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 means. And, and you know, I thought that was actually a pretty good idea because I've always said over the years that I've never taught an entire session on healing. I just preach the gospel and do healing. So look, no preparation needed. We'll just do it. You know, back in the days of the charismatic voodoo formulas, there were guys giving you dozens of reasons why healings happen, dozens of reasons why healings don't happen because formulas sell and we like to take things into our own hands. But I don't think we need to get into all these transactional formulas, much less superstitious attempts at pulling off metaphysical realities we know nothing about. The only formula I have and the only formula you're going to get from the scripture is this. It all happens by the Spirit and the Word. I just get drunk in the Holy Ghost and start making stuff up. I mean, how does God create in the beginning with the spoken Word? Holy Spirit is hovering over the waters. He says, let there be an invisible reality as he saw it from his perspective comes into manifestation. He framed the worlds by his spoken word. Now I'm not just talking about name it and claim it with the spoken word. Now you, sure you can slap your hands on a private airplane and maybe you'll get one in 30 years but no I'm talking about speaking in the glory. Yeah I'm talking about drinking in the wine of the spirit effortlessly basking in his tangible presence and man in my meetings I really do. I just start making stuff up. I mean I don't pretend to get these fancy words of knowledge like other people do. I mean, occasionally my knee may itch and I pray for people's knees, but at other times it's just itching because I ate too much yeast. But no, look, I just speak stuff out. Cancers be healed. And the Lord's like, yeah, good idea. Cancers be healed. Look, you have to understand you have divine delegated authority. Remember God, and even in the old covenant, God told Moses to tell Aaron to tell his sons to tell the people, the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you, etc., etc., the ironic uh, blessing. Look, God is not an insecure CEO. He delegates authority so that we can frame things up in the spirit by the word. And a lot of people don't realize we really are kings. We really are loaded. We really are seated in places of power. We are in heavenly places. And the sons of Aaron... They were not asking for a blessing. They were releasing benediction authority. They were proclaiming a blessing. You remember when the prophet, the, the uh, lady makes a room in her house for the prophet, Elijah, Elisha, uh, I'm ad-libbing, uh, but it was one of the guys, and, and she makes this room. It was like a condo. And, and then he doesn't say, like, what can God do for you? I mean, they understood something of sowing and reaping in those days. No, he says, what could I do for you? He understood something of his divine authority to be able to bless. And she's like, well, I've never had a son, so he gives her a son. I mean, by supernatural means, he gives her a son, and then later the son dies, and he raises the son from the dead. Pretty crazy. It was actually Elisha, I remember now. Anyways, how much more authority as New Covenant believers do we have? I am not prophesying a coming breakthrough or a coming healing. I'm here to tell you that your breakthrough has arrived. Healing has already risen in his wings. It's called the new covenant. It is the now covenant. By his stripes, you are healed. That is the objective, concrete reality and we proclaim that we might subjectively manifest and experience it. But it is the wrong road to start trying to overanalyze the problem. And you, you see it all the time, don't you? Well, why am I not healed? Because I don't have enough faith, because of some generational sin, because I looked at porn when I was 17 and it was animal porn. Look, you are looking for a logical answer for evil, but evil is illogical. 
When they asked Jesus why the particular man was afflicted, was it his sin or his parents' sin? And Jesus is like, no, it's appointed for the glory of God that this man be healed, okay? Jesus is not pointing to a reason for evil. He's pointing to the light. You don't need to try to figure out why you aren't healed. You just need to realize that from his perspective, you already are. And if you haven't seen the manifestation yet, we'll stay camped right there until you do. But, but it's not a striving white knuckle like a crack addict at an AA meeting trying to make yourself get healed. Your mentality doesn't create reality. We are waking up to reality. This is effortless, okay? It's either impossible or effortless, okay? And so if you've been striving in this area, I would encourage you to relax, okay? I mean, that's the big question of all time, isn't it? Why don't we see every person heal? Well, look, there's nothing stopping us. <laughs> I mean, if we were to realize we're packing the fullness of the Trinity, but we don't go blaming people for either being powerless, not being able to heal. Oh, you're not like us. You can't heal the sick. You're not a charismatic. And we don't go blaming sick people for their lack of faith, trying to pawn it off on them like that's going to help them out or whatever. No, we point to the truth. You are healed because faith comes by hearing anyway. Instead of having a problem focus and, 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 and them hearing reasons for problems, why don't you let them hear the truth? Have an answer focus. Guess what? It's already done. What whether you see it or not. There is something very true about creating the reality we live in. I mean, there, there is a principle in that. There are deep metaphysical principles of things like the observer effect, for instance, where, you know, in metaphysics, where particles move or, or exist even based on whether they're being observed. I mean, it is a radically mind-blowing, crazy principle that, that is only answered spiritually, really. And I mean, it's not answered by Newtonian physics anyways. But look, let's just stop asking the question, why am I not healed? And even trying to create that healing in a sense of self-effort. But look, let's just focus on the truth, which is that from his perspective, again, you already are. And eventually you will catch up to the facts because the facts are the facts whether you believe them or not. Okay, And you'll catch up to the facts of your healing, whether it's the end of your short, itsy-bitsy, teeny-weeny temporal life this side of eternity, as they say. Or if you don't want to wait that itsy-bitsy, teeny bit, well then why wait? I mean, why do we have to preach a gospel of delay? Heaven is right here, right now. But you do need to know two things. Two things that may seem contradictory. For starters, God is good. And secondly, God is sovereign. Now look, because he is good, I know he doesn't give sickness to his children. You'd be a sicko dad to give your kid cancer. And I guarantee that he is kinder than your earthly parenting. And so if he's good, but I'm still sick, well, does that mean he's powerless? Do we start asking then if we've got to take healing into our own hands? Oh, it's my lack of faith. He wants to heal me, but he can't. And start navel-gazing and inner-healing ourselves or whatever. Look, no, God is sovereign. He's the one who pulls it off. He's all-powerful. But because he's sovereign over everything, don't, like our hyper-Calvinist brothers, start blaming him for sickness just because he's the guy in the sovereign chair. Look, don't think that this means he's the one who gave you cancer to teach you a lesson because he's good. Remember, that's the other side of the paradox. He's good. He doesn't want you to be sick. He didn't give you sickness, but he's also sovereign. You may still see the sickness, but don't start thinking that he isn't sovereign anymore and it's up to you to make the healing happen. It is him. It is his power. It is his spirit. And so what's this thing with delegation then and our participation in this whole thing? Well, look, he is the one. It is his spirit, again, his power. We just get to participate in being the vessels. That's why it is as simple at times as prayer, as speaking. Prayer is not you working your power. It is appealing to the all-powerful one. You could be a little kid. You don't have to go through a prayer training class or a healing the sick course with the workbook that costs $49.95. True prayer is a place of humility where we are not trying to work something up. I mean, for God's sake, most people act like prayer is working up this wave, you know, pushing the oars in the galley ship to make God move. No, prayer is effortlessly appealing to him, getting out of the way, laying back. It's more passive than anything else. 
And higher than just asking prayer, like petitioning him for healing, there is something of a proclamation prayer, a declaration where you are strongly releasing and proclaiming what we know to be true and what we know to be his will. Not just that you uh, get healed, but proclaiming that you already are healed and, and that your body must realize it. We release manifestation. And I'm not talking about some ritualistic, legalistic proclamation prayer that you got to pray over your city every day or whatever. But if you've got a problem, if you've got an obstacle, you've got a mountain in front of you, you can speak to that thing. You can level it. You don't just have to be tossed about by the whims of faith. You have delegated, I'm sorry, the winds of fate. You have delegated authority. And even then, I'm not even saying that, that speaking is a formula. When I say the Spirit and the Word, ultimately you know who the Word is. Jesus Christ is the Word, the living Logos of the Father. You've been healed in Him. Look, I've just brushed up against people many a time and they just got healed. I didn't say a word. I mean, so sure, look, we're going to pray, but even then, we're pulling from the gospel itself, a person, a living presence. He is here. He is yours. It's not some formulaic thing you got to figure out. It's not some Gnostic mental ascent. So right now, here's what we're going to do. I want you to take your hands and just stretch them out to the screen, okay? If you're watching this on a phone, just put that phone on the part of your body that needs healing right now. If you're watching on a computer or an iPad, stretch your hand towards the screen and I will stretch my hands towards the camera right now as a point of contact by faith. Okay, there's no magic, but this is mystical. This is the power of God unto salvation. Glory. It is the power of God unto your healing because the kingdom of God is not just a matter of talk, but demonstration of power. First Corinthians 420. Okay, so guys, before I pray even, look, no more going down this road of questioning, doubting both his power and his desire. You know, he's either impotent or he's undesiring to heal. Now look, we can ask questions of God, sure, absolutely, but God's willingness and power to heal are absolute and unrelenting because he is love. God wants to work a miracle more than you want the miracle to be worked. And let me tell you, every single event we do, we see miracles. Healings happen all the time. We've seen dozens of deaf ears open, blind eyes open, uh, dozens of tumors and cancers falling off of people's bodies fat shrinking off of people's bodies, 10, 20, 40, up to 80 pounds, supernatural weight loss. We see weight loss happen all the time. I don't get on Facebook and pop it on there every single time. It just happens. Teeth popping in people's heads, gold teeth, silver teeth, brand new white teeth, row of gold down one side, row of silver down the other side, fibromyalgia, chronic pain heal, chronic fatigue, brand new knees, brand new hips and people's bodies. We see it all the time. New backs, broken, fractured bones healed. Man, I, I'm not going to sit here and rattle off every testimony. But look, the Bible doesn't say signs and wonders follow those who follow signs and wonders. We don't need to be preaching signs and wonders. It is okay to give testimony. That's good. But look, signs and wonders follow those who believe. What I'm talking about is we preach the gospel and as people realize who they are and what they have in him, boom, we start to see manifestation because faith comes by hearing. It's really simple. Okay, Christ has done it. You are fully whole in him. What, what you are, uh, you have no idea. We're scratching this. We don't even know how glorious we are what we're packing and you are whole right now whether you know it or not whether you feel it or not whether you even see it or not I am proclaiming the fact whether you see the fact or not just focus on the fact so right now and I don't mean some mental straining I mean just let go right now with your hands stretched out I just want you to receive this effortlessly I'm not saying some work of receiving just just relax I release right now healing virtue right now in Jesus name I command bodies to be healed from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. I, I command muscles and sinews, ligaments and tendons, bones to be healed. Arthritis, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis. I, I command all of that stuff reversed in Jesus' name. That false fire of arthritis gone. I command cancers, tumors, any terminal illness or life-threatening infirmity to be gone right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command hearts to be strengthened where there's been damage from stroke or heart attack. I command that thing reversed. I release uh, eyesight uh, restoration right now 
now in Jesus' name, uh, where there's deafness, partial deafness in the ear, TMJ, clicking of the jaw, healed right now in Jesus' name. I command hair to grow on people's heads. I just released right now a healing for dogs. Somebody's dog is sick in the room right now. That's a word of knowledge. Look at that. I just released that in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. Whatever you need, guys. Look, you don't need to wait for me to call out a word of knowledge. I told you I'd just be making it up anyways. Just receive healing virtue. He's not the specialist who has to call out a certain part. He is the healer. He is healing itself. Just receive it in your body right now. Backs, knees, feet, pain from auto accidents, car accidents, no matter how far in the future you may be hearing this recorded video, watching it right now, whether you, wherever you are, and hearing the sound of these words through the airways, through the Wi-Fi or cell towers, I release the eternal and living word of God to you, which is yes and amen to your every need. If you uh, needed healing in your body, I want you to go ahead and test that body part out. If your rotator cuff was hurt, and start to move it around. Move your body in a way that would have hurt you before. Just check it out. Bend your back. See if it hurts anymore. Bend your knees if you couldn't bend them before. If it's not hurting, if you're not feeling pain during a message like this, hey, that's a pretty cool thing. Amen? And if you're starting to feel a little bit better, hey, just receive more. Take it, all right? He's the healer. He's right here. He didn't leave when I stopped praying. And now look, go tell somebody you got healed. Mess up their day with the shock factor. If you got healed, go encourage somebody else who needs it. Post a testimony in the Facebook feed. Repost the video. Do whatever. Not because it makes me look good. I already don't look good. It encourages people who may also be sick. It builds their faith. Go encourage somebody. Give it away, okay? And look, before you do go, I, I just want to say, A, Hey, number one, we have, this is a special deal, I'm just announcing for the first time today, a brand new issue of the Ecstatic Magazine. It's our free digital publication. You can read it online. It's the early 2017 version, and it should be posted online today. By the time you see this video, uh, Saturday, February 17th, 2017, if you go to thenewmystics.com slash ecstatic, It'll be posted today or at least by tomorrow. What you need to do actually get our new Mystics iPhone or Android app and you can read it on there. As soon as it comes out, boom, you'll get a notification. You can read it right on the app. The app is free. Just search for new Mystics on the iPhone or the uh, Android store. Okay, we got a lot of good articles in, in the magazine, a lot of stuff planned in there, some fun stuff that nobody even knows about until the magazine comes out today. And also, we do have some supernatural events on the calendar. You know, like John Wimber, I love the term naturally supernatural. And our events, they may be wild and kooky and we may believe in the miraculous, but we also know how to be real and joke around and have fun and just enjoy life, which is so missing in most of the church. I mean, we're not trying to be super spooks. Contrary to popular opinion, I'm not trying to be weird in order to be spiritual. Look, weird just comes naturally. You don't have to work on that. Anyway, look, if you've ever wanted to check out an event, but you were just a little spooked out. I mean, we always get we get emails from people, you know, uh, I'm not a charismatic in any way. I'm a Presbyterian. Would it be safe for me to come? Am I going to stand out like a sore thumb? Look, it is just fun. It's a party, okay? Take the plunge. Bring some brave friends, okay? Nobody's going to be analyzing whether or not you're flopping on the floor. And look, in just under two weeks, I am hitting the road with my musical buddy, Tim Wright, for a four-city tour in America. So this is your opportunity because this month, it's kicking off. It's going to be quite a while before we do another tour, okay? Okay? It's the Gospel Fun House, and it's coming to these four cities, Atlanta, Georgia, New York City, Omaha, Nebraska, and Cleveland, Ohio. Whatever city's closest to you, these are our only events in those four regions, in the South, in the Big Apple, in the Great Plains, and in the Great Lakes regions, okay? So look, absolute last chance to join the party. Go to thenewmystics.com slash fun. And look, I have pulled my son off of the video games and paid him well to deliver to you these following announcements to explain it all. So he'll tell you more about it. Check it out. Hello, John Crowder will be traveling to four cities this month. Cleveland, Ohio, Atlanta, Georgia, Omaha, Nebraska, and New York City. Get all the details at thenewmystics.com slash fun. John will also be in Canada for the Cosmic Canadian Tour coming to Toronto, Montreal, Edmonton, and Abbotsford. Find out more at thenewmystics.com slash uh, can. John? <laughs> I can't. 
John Crowder Naked is a special event coming to Newport News, Virginia in April. Lily Crowder has a special woman's retreat with Benny Johnson and Melissa Wood in Santa Barbara, Cal Cal California in April. And, and John Crowder will, be, will also be in California in Redlands in May. We have many other spectacular events you can find at, online at thenewmystics.com slash schools. Also, if you're ready to respond to the Great Commission with Swagger, hurry over to our website and sign up for the next mission trip heading to Hong Kong and the Philippines in late 2017. It's going to fill up because it's a dope trip. Go to thenewmystics.com slash go. Sons of Thunder runs on partnerships and generous contributions from people like you. If you've been blessed by the ministry and want to participate in sharing the gospel and reaching the poor with us, consider becoming a monthly supporter at thenewmystics.com partners.